Hey there fellows, Buddy Spike here. So in this video I felt like it is necessary to do a full cockpit introduction because there are quite a few new things added to this specific aircraft. We got a back seat that is different from this seat. So first I'm going to show you this seat, everything from right to left and then I'm going to go back, uh, go back to that seat and then do the same thing and show you what the differences are as well. So without further ado, enjoy the video fellas. Alright, I set the plane for to autopilot and this is target practicing round so we don't have any danger of an enemy. So starting from the right, you can adjust the joystick, you might have seen this before. You just press auto, adjust it wherever you want and then press auto again or you can press these buttons individually and then set it that way. This switch seat button is in single player only. In multiplayer you don't have this button. So in single player you can switch seat but then I don't know how the plane will fly I've never really tested it that much so I'm gonna I'm gonna fly the plane myself mostly and when I go in the back seat I'm gonna set the plane to autopilot so that it doesn't crash into a mountain so these are engine left and engine right buttons they are both set to on right now because the plane is flying this is canopy I'm not gonna canopy up right now otherwise it'll fly off this is brake lock you can see the brake lock indicator up front and then this panel over here is engine management. So right now, uh, this is let's check out the fuel first. You have bingo fuel setting. You can change the setting in the MFD, and these these two bars in the outer outer bars are the external fuel, and the inner one is the internal. So right now we're using up the external fuel. We can't change. Um, we can't select which tanks to use for this aircraft, I believe. This is the nozzle diameter. This is the nozzle position, and right now it's kind of half. So when you go full mill power, the nozzle is going to reduce in diameter. And then as soon as you go full afterburner, the nozzle diameter becomes uh, uh, increases. It goes to the maximum diameter it can. This is to do with aerodynamics which I cannot cover in this video because when you're going supersonic you want the outlet to have a bigger diameter. So this is nozzle position and then you have pounds per hour fuel consumption and then we have temperatures in degrees Celsius, RPM percentage. So over here we have RPM lever setting and this is what's the RPM percentage so this uh, there's a bit of a difference this knob over here is to set priority between uh, electronic warfare or weapons for weapons it's pretty simple uh, you can change your weapons Auto right now disengaged. Auto disengaged. stand by heading so right now I arm and now I can change the weapons um, just like the other aircrafts I can select between air to air and air to ground weapons when I have an electronic warfare mode you see the light just went dim a bit so you can also see the difference here so when you go to EW electronic warfare if you look at the electronic warfare uh, page you can change which jammer do you want to use at the moment now at the, in the aircraft at the back you press the trigger you start to jam actually. I think right now I haven't selected any target. Oh, let me select the target. Targeting pod, uh, I'm gonna set it to targeting pod. Yeah, so when I press trigger, it's gonna start to jam, and when I press trigger again, it goes to standby mode. So this um, gives you, this, this switch over here gives you priority for the joystick to use buttons for jammers instead of weapons. So I'm gonna switch it back to weapon, and I'm gonna switch it back to my normal mode. So these are these are two master modes that are very important. This button over here is the indicator for MRAD. That means whether or not you're jamming. So I'm gonna switch it back here. Right now MRAD is on, that means jammer is on. So when you press it again, it's on standby and then this turns off. So the reason why you have a separate indicator for this is when you're jamming, uh, you have enemies that know the direction of your aircraft. They don't know how far you are, but they know the general direction, which which is like you're in the dark and you're flashing the light. You know what I mean? <clears throat> okay. So, this is one of the largest screens that I've ever seen. Well, at the back, there's an even larger one. So, 
the, the upper panel is very similar to the F45. You have chaps, you have autopilot off, you have heading, altitude, and you can change altimeter mode. Right now it's set to uh, radar, so it tells you exactly how far above you are the ground, and if you change it back, once again, if you change it back, now it is ASL, air to, air to sea level. So now your altitude is based on your sea level. So now you can clear a waypoint from here, and then these are the four settings you can set. Right now, I think I'm only using this one and this one. So this is very heavy because it takes time to configure all of this, and you want to get used to one specific setting, you know? Otherwise, uh, otherwise it's just hard to navigate while you're in, a, while you're in combat. So the upper panel over here normally we have radio on the side panel but this time I don't maybe it's similar to F-14 I'm not sure I'm not aware um, I'm not familiar with the cockpit of F-14 but for this aircraft the developer decided to have the radio panel right in front so this is radio for team and global remember when you switch to global you have this red light on so that so you need to be careful of what you're saying so this is team and this is push to talk off or hot now, please don't leave it at hot, otherwise whatever you say is just going to be transmitted. It's better to leave it at push to talk. This is the volume for the radio, and this is for the intercom. Intercom is for the guy at the back. So if you want to communicate with your co-pilot, or your rear, or whatever you, want, whatever you want to call it, or electronic warfare officer, you can use the intercom if you're not using Discord. So you can turn it on. Remember, if you're not able to hear your buddy, you can you gotta remember to turn on and then increase the volume. Otherwise, you might be transmitting, but you're not able to hear. So, so just keep in mind about the intercom settings. And then this is the brightness for the HUD. And this is HUD off and on. And this is tint. So F-45 did not have a tint. This aircraft does. The F-45, the the visor comes down as a tint. So that's something different from the F-45. All right. So coming down over here, this is armament, arm armament. If that's how you pronounce it, you can either have it as safe or arm. And if the guy at the back, hold on, let me show you something. If if I keep it to safe, and my buddy arms it, now this is also set to arm. Okay. I think this works in the multiplayer. So in the multiplayer if your buddy is armed this turns yellow. That means it is armed but not by you. So I'm going to keep it safe. This is radar off and on, on and off. And this is brightness for the whole MFD. So at night you can have the brightness a little bit less so that it's less heavy on your eyes. And then display off and on. And this is something new. This I haven't seen before in any other aircraft. This makes it handy to select. This makes it easy to select your your pylons for jettison let's say I've selected these pylons but I don't want to jettison these guys let's say I want to let's say I want to jettison these two harms so I hold I, I press these two buttons then I press the trigger and then it is set to select it and and now I have jettisoned uh, these two only Right? You could do. You could also do this from the SMS page, but it is kind of more handy to do from this page. Okay, I'm not sure what this pylon. I think pylon removes the the rack on which your weapons are mounted to have the aircraft even more aerodynamic. This 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 is what I believe it is. All is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, most of the time, you want to jettison the tanks when they're empty. This way you're faster, more maneuverable. Alright. Okay, so this is covered. Oh, okay, I forgot about the lights. We have nav lights, strobe lights, landing lights, formation lights. Formation lights are lights that would help you know your position in the formation. And these are interior lights. These are red specifically so that it is less heavy on the eyes. And illumination, this is illumination of... These, this is like the backlight for all the gauges and buttons and switches right this is seat up and down this is helmet visor button so you have a choice to bring your hand on the side and press it or you could just use this button over here and once the visor is down you can have your nav uh, sorry you can have your night vision 
You can also have your night vision like this. In case if you can't find the button in during combat. So this is standby artificial horizon. You got your speed, altitude, your your heading, as well as your pitch angle. These are flaps. Remember, the flaps do not want to deploy once once the wing is even a little bit uh, at an angle. So even if the wing is a little bit not forward, because sometimes in auto mode, the wings might be swept just even by one degree. Even if it is swept by one degree, it's not going to come down. Your flaps won't come down. All right. So if you're if you're sending an auto and the flaps don't come down, that means the wings are just tiny bit swept. So you can have it forward and then flaps one. Right. Remember, you have an indicator for your flaps as well. So indicator moves according to the actual position of the flaps. And this is also new to this aircraft. I'm going to set it to auto. So one very handy thing about what's the angle of your wings. You can know it from here as well, but then you got to look towards the side. Let's say if you want to know the angle while looking forward, that icon over there, that's the angle of the wings. Right now it's swept by a little bit. Right. So this is gear down, this is gear up. You have gear lights, uh, gear position indicator as well. Yellow is in transition and green is when they are fully locked. Gear up. This is launch bar for catapult. This is hook for catching the wire. This is keto trim. So when you when you're being launched from the uh, catapult in uh, while while taking off from aircraft carrier. If you have it on, the how much pitch up is required for you not to swim with the fishes, you can use this cattle trim. Otherwise, I, I prefer it off. I kind of want to have that control over how much I pitch up right after takeoff. So this is, I would say, personal preference. This is APU. Once you turn on the APU, you want to wait for three lights to come up. First one is orange, then you have two green. Once the second green is on, now your APU is ready. Then you can turn on your engines. And then once you turn on the APU, you're going to see that if the battery is getting low, it will start to get back in the green. And when you're turning on engines, I would prefer that you turn engine on one by one. Otherwise, sometimes you can overload the battery, even with APU on. And... Uh, if the battery gets drained, your engines won't start. So this is battery switch. I don't want to turn off right now. This is low battery, um, low volt indicator as well. So you have a gauge and an indicator. So that's that. And this is uh, already talked about it. If you set it to auto, the plane will decide what angle of wing it should be at. If you bring it forward, it's going to remain full forward and back is full back. This is manual control and this is auto. This is fuel port. There's a fuel port on your right side. I'm going to show you in a second. So this is the fuel port on the right side of your aircraft for air air refueling. You can have the fuel port. You need to have the fuel port open to refuel the aircraft and then after you're done you can just shut it off. So this is a uh, this is throttle in case you might have not guessed it and you can for the first time adjust the height of the throttle. This is a very neat addition to this aircraft and this is the mp3 player if you can have mp3 files there's a specific folder if you have mp3 files you can control your music from there this is this has always been there in Beatle VR so that's uh, I think that's pretty much it oh this is this is bobblehead I, I like this guy before you used to you could actually interact with it but now I think with the, with the smaller one you can't interact you can just you can just do this this, this thing is nice. So maybe in some other video I'm gonna go in detail for all the options in the MFT because we got some new options as well which are which are quite nice actually. So maybe in the future video I could cover all this part but for now um, it's gonna be a really long video so I'm not, I'm not gonna go into that. So the front seat of the cockpit 
is done I think I've missed anything remember if you forget your call sign your call sign is over here alpha one one is so in case you forget so now we go back to the rear seat all right guys for the first time in the rear seat we don't have controls to fly the plane you're completely dependent on your pilot so it is scary a little bit in the beginning but you get used to it so you can also open the canopy from the rear seat and right now the HUD is off so I'm just gonna turn it on so this panel is the same as a front seat over here everything is the same so it is preferred that the co-pilot has electronic warfare selected so the pilot at the back can uh, manage electronic warfare stuff and the pilot in front can can fly the plane and shoot targets no so this is everything is the same as the front seat and this is the new addition to the back seat when you're managing stuff believe me you need as many screens as you can have this is new this is different so when you switch to weapon you can actually select weapon hold on I'm gonna set it to arm you can actually select air to air weapon or air to ground weapon or you can keep it to electronic warfare and then you can select which um, which jammer to use right so this bar is is different for the back seat so this is the same you got radar switch over here display powers over here brightness HMCS so you can turn it on and then bring it down so from the back seat you don't have a HUD like the front seat so you can know this uh, the altitude and speed and all that stuff from the back using uh, HMCS so you can you can uh, turn it on from here you can like the visor going down is not enough you need to turn on this switch as well right I'm gonna switch it off for now and then on the left side and this is the same as the front seat and your lights are over here all your lights so these are in tandem if you change them here it's gonna change in front seat as well and this is your visor your night vision seat up and down so this is pretty self-explanatory and this is also the same as the front seat so most of the things are the same it's just that you can't fly the plane but you got this extra over here and you got this guy over here the the left handle and these handles by the way you can't you can't fly the plane with them all you can do is control screens and they come in handy when trying to control the screens this is uh, actually pretty good pretty neat yeah so the left one you could use left and right thumbstick to change the screen and you can zoom in and zoom out the tactical situation display and if you press trigger you got an option to change the transmission power all right this is only applicable from the rear seat and that's uh, that's the only thing you can do once you have both the triggers held and you're using thumb up and down so you can take help from the um, the tips that are on the stick and then you can press uh, one of the buttons to change the mode and this would this would take time to get used to this is not easy stuff so this I'm just giving you a general idea and only with practice you'll be able to perform these tasks alright guys so this was the cockpit the front and the back this was just a brief introduction of what the new aircraft has to offer I think this cockpit is just amazing I think it is very well made and I'm very happy that it is it is really different from the other aircrafts in VTOL VR I hope you enjoyed this video guys as always thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one buddy spike out oh by the way the most important thing I forgot the handle the yellow handle Thank <laughs> you.